Hello and welcome to That British Homestead. My name's Nick and today we're going to have a little look of what we're going to be sewing in March. It's very exciting. March is when we start proper, proper, proper sewing. Remembering that we've already talked about sewing peppers and chilies and tomatoes etc. Um, in the last couple of what we're going to grow this month videos. First category we're going to be looking at da -da -da, is all of our brassicas that we're going to be sewing. So we have quite a few brassicas that we're going to be sewing this year because I absolutely love cabbage. We do a lot of coleslaws and sauerkraut etc. So we do eat quite a lot of cabbage fresh and canned. It's great to store and it's great to have throughout the winter too. So we do grow quite a bit of it. So there's quite a few cabbages that we're going to be sowing. So we have a pointy cabbage called a Dutchman. This is an F1 hybrid. F1 hybrid basically means that it's not an heirloom, meaning that if you collect seeds from this variety and sowed them again, it wouldn't be the same so as the mother plant. Now that doesn't mean you can't do that, it just means that it won't be the same, you won't get the same characteristics. Now, with things like sunflowers, I think it's really beneficial because you get such stunning different varieties of colours, etc. And I really enjoy that. But it's something that you have to take in mind. So if you do want to save the seeds, maybe an heirloom variety would be more appropriate for you. But I'm not saying that you don't have to. Um, so I sow them in March. I plant them out about May-ish, end of April, May. Uh, that's when our last frost date is at the end of April. Obviously hardening them off first. It's funny because even these um, really, like what we think of cold weather crops, do need to be hardened off. So just make sure that you have that in mind. You can do it several ways. You can kind of put it out into the world and then take it back like after an hour, then two hours and three hours and build it up like that. Or what I do is I put it out in the shade with a shade cloth on and then after a few hours take it back in and take it back in um, every day for way more hours like normally when I'm at work and as long as you don't put it in the actual sun it's okay and then eventually take the shade, um, shade cloth off leave it in the shade and then put it in the sun with the shade cloth on again etc so I do that to make sure it hardens off quite a bit because I just don't have the time um, especially when you go down an allotment it's not your house it's very different um, we've got one called Red Land Landero Red Landero this is a new one from Mega Seeds stores I get my seeds from absolutely everywhere honestly if Primark sold seeds I'd have them so it's a good little company um, reliable it's just the problem is they don't have the pictures on it i wish they did because i think they'd look even nicer that once again is an f1 hybrid but it's a red variety which is very exciting this one is gorgeous it's savoy cabbage it's absolutely stunning and that cabbage is called january king three i talk about this cabbage all the time and um, because i just think it's an absolute stunner and I generally love the way it looks. It is a winter favourite for us. It's really frost hardy. It's full of vitamin C and antioxidants and all sorts of things like that. It's just, it's just almost too pretty to eat. I absolutely love that one. So I'm really excited about that. I'm going to actually turn to them this year. Got another one, which is a Holland uh, Winter XL. So this one is a very large head of cabbage. So it's a really large, dense head of cabbage, which is really good for things like sauerkrauts and preserving, okay? Because you want to kind of like chop them all up and have it really dense and easy to do so it's a really nice one this was another gorgeous one it's just the same variety but it's from a different company you can tell this is a bit of a deeper purple so same variety though so we'll see if there's any differences between those two so they are absolutely gorgeous though together um, I just think they're an absolute dream of variety. You can see that in the seedlings they are very green. They do, as they get more mature, they go more red. This is one of our favourite varieties. Yeah. So we do have and this is what it looks like in real life. It's an absolute stunner. And the best thing we do with this is, you know when you go to the kebab right. shop, love a kebab? Well, we, we tend to make our own kebabs in summer and they do purple cabbage with um, a bit of lemon on it and that's how we eat this so we do grow quite a few of them because we adore them and they are absolutely stunning the actual color the only problem is is the slugs love them too so you, we do have to net all of our brassicas because of the pigeons but we also have to be super vig vigilant for them slugs as well another f1 hybrid this one's called mozark it is um, from sutton's which i can never say 
this is a new variety for us it's going to be something that we're going to be super excited about also on the back of these they have little notes i think that's quite cute we've got some more generic generic um red cabbages that a friend sent me he's he saved them himself so it's always exciting to get them from a friend because you never really know what you're going to get when um they've see self-saved so that's really exciting i really enjoy doing that red drum head another conical shaped cabbage red one we do enjoy our red cabbages i think you're going to get that in <laughs> over um we really like having um cabbages like coleslaws with red cabbage in them they're dead posh i know and also we like the kebab cabbage with lemon in it as well which is absolutely gorgeous also we do sauerkraut and all of that sort of stuff and we do red whatever color we have we go ahead and make that so that's something that we do kind of look out for and um like also i absolutely love borscht uh, which is is a Russian cabbage soup um, and it's really nice with red cabbage as well. This one is called Imperial, I believe. My memory, it's a green cabbage. Another really important harvest for us is our Brussels sprouts. I know they're not for everyone, okay, but my daughter absolutely loves Brussels sprouts to the point where we have to net them from her, let alone the birds. So it's really important for us to have a lot of Brussels sprouts in the winter because she really looks forward to them. So we've got two varieties here. Oh, I like. We've got another variety here. Um, as we've already sown some this year already. This is a F1 hybrid called Brendan. Like I said, I just grab any seeds that are available. I don't care if they're F1 hybrids or not. I kind of just more worry about the quality of the seed and whether or not um, we can get a good harvest from it. Another Brussels sprouts we're going to go for is Bull's Blood. These give very small um, little red necks. This is one of my favourite harvests. It's been so good to us this winter and it's called Black Magic. Black Magic is a type of kale and it's got these beautiful crinkly leaves and they're really dark and they are lovely. They do have a little bit of an issue with white fly but we don't really mind that too much. When we bring it home I chop it all up and I just submerge it with a plate under water and rinse out the water a few times and that seems to be working super well for getting rid of the white fly i know probably if, if you're anything like me when i first started um gardening i was like oh gross it's disgusting <laughs> but you just get used to it this one um is a really pretty kale it's called candy floss it is a um lighter green kale with pink uh veins going through it's just quite pretty this one's nice for the kids and i also have a mixed variety that has loads of different types of kale from black magic i believe it's got candy floss in there as well and a load of others like curly kale which is very decorative i really like kale chips as well so it's something that is really really nice to have and it's so good for you especially if you're like me and have an issue with having anemia kale's so good for you apparently as well i was reading that kale is quite good for people who suffer with or have alzheimer's in their family if they eat kale every day it's meant to super boost or brassicas every day it's meant to boost um the resistance to that which is to be honest if it, even if it doesn't work you should kale so good for you so purple sprouting broccoli lots of people don't really like to eat because um it takes so long for them to grow it is a very long hog because you plant them about this time of year yeah. even though it has a very long growing season it gives you a harvest when nothing else is really harvestable so it is now february and i have an absolute ton of purple sprouting broccoli in my kitchen right in the uh, fridge in my kitchen it'd be weird if i just had it in my kitchen and we've been eating on that for ages and it is pretty much apart from the odd rogue leek that i overwintered there's not really much in the whole garden at the moment so that is an absolute godsend to us so there's a few varieties that i just will always do okay even though it takes a very long time i will wait for them because we want to fill that hungry gap don't we which is all the way up until probably about june from about january february when you've kind of all your stored vegetables i've either started tasting proper samey right or it's because you've um kind of run out of them completely we're lucky we've still got potatoes from the summer's harvest but sometimes around about this time we haven't even got that and it is just our later harvests of jerusalem artichokes etc <laughs> lots 
of beetroot this year as well. This is Rudolph. Rudolph is a red variety. It is a absolute trooper. It's a very heavy harvester. So we always go for this one just so that we have an absolute guaranteed harvest. Burbank. Burbank's a interesting one. I believe it is it's an F1 hybrid, but I believe it's a white variety, which I always find really exciting um, to try. I haven't had that great germination rate with the white varieties compared to the red varieties, in my personal opinion. That could just be me, so I like to try it a couple of times before I'm like, okay, maybe the germination rate is a little bit down on that. And this one is called Lancer, and it's a mixed variety. As you can see, there is the white variety, and then you've got the purple sprouting broccoli there as well and they are absolutely wonderful i'm getting absolutely tons of purple sprouting broccoli i think i have three or four plants of purple sprouting broccoli and that's way enough for us to eat as much broccoli as we can possibly think of and to have something for the freezer i made some soup etc so that's really really good to be able to have um in terms of food stability, do you see what I mean? Because I want to reduce how much I'm going down the supermarket and continuously buying um, different vegetables and stuff and that really does help. Um, another one which I've already sown but it's, I did say I want to do a staggered sowing is, um, is what we call broccoli or calabrese. That would be the broccoli that you'd buy down the supermarket. You know, the one that looks like broccoli, um, not the sprouting type. So that one's really good. We want to have a staggered harvest of that as well. I like both of these, you know, stir fry, Sunday dinners, etc. And even like broccoli and cauliflower cheese is really good to have. And it's something that is like a comfort food for us. So it's really exciting to have. Uh, this variety is called Stomboy. It's an F1 hybrid again, but it's a really good one to have. This is a really exciting variety for us. I love sweet. <laughs> I love sweet in the winter. Um, as soon as it gets to like autumn, I'm starting to think, okay, I want sweet. Mashed sweet and carrot is probably one of my favourite things to eat in the winter with, with gravy. Ooh, with a roast dinner absolutely love it and we all just devour it lots and lots of butter on it it's absolutely gorge so we've got one called martian um, this variety is really really good it produces nice big uh, bulbs and it is an absolute trooper but just remember that early germination doesn't really work you don't want to rush to sow this okay because it needs a little bit of a warmer weather to be able to germinate and i did have a whole entire packet of these fail last year not these variety but i cannot remember the variety that i bought but they failed and i was gutted so i end up going for mr Feathergills, and they actually guarantee that if these don't germinate they replace the packet and i've had something similar happen with kaolitz from uh, marshall's a good few years ago this was and they replaced the whole entire packet which is so nice it's nice to work with seed companies that have that sort of if you're not a happy policy they do replace it so i really did appreciate that and the guys from marshall's were so lovely about it um and i'm sure that these will be too so considering what happened last year and i had to buy sweet instead of having my own delicious sweet i was a little bit gutted i will once again be sewing those undercover because the pigeons just love brassica tops and so far all of the things we've been talking about are brassicas <laughs> okay pak choy pak choy is a absolute favorite so they're really young and tender they really cook up well and they're something that's you know a little bit expensive in the shop i i personally feel and you know you can get these sort of seeds for a couple of quid and you get an absolutely lovely delicious dream of a food another one that i have and this is just for this month of course is a packet with the same panacan uh, which is the top variety here and one that's called ruby now ruby is a gorgeous variety and um, they really do kind of like give a pop to your meals a little bit like the purple sprout in broccoli you kind of want to have eat the rainbow don't you so you, i do like the idea of all the different colors and varieties within my meals so the red color is actually more vibrant in hotter weather however even in the spring and in the autumn you can get like baby leaves from them and they're absolutely gorgeous you can actually throw them to salads and stuff if you don't want to use them in stir fries but i, I am a big fan of a stir fry there's also cauliflower that i want to grow i love cauliflower we eat a lot of cauliflower love cauliflower cheese so uh, one of the ones that we're going to be growing is viola 
D silica. It's an organic variety, you've got 300 seeds here. It is a really beautiful purple cauliflower so that's once again something that we really look for i did have a variety called cheddar which was an orange variety it was really beautiful and i've also got uh romanesco here which is that beautiful conical shape cauliflower which really looks like repeating patterns it's a really beautiful variety which we've grown a couple of times over the years because we kind of mix and mix and match over the years so that's quite exciting moving onwards and upwards we do have a lot of lettuce oh, that we're going to be growing lettuce is one of those things that you know before i started home growing i actually really didn't like lettuce um i find it quite bitter because if you don't give it enough water it does become quite bitter and we used to always buy things like icebergs which my partner's favourite but I found them really bitter um, and I didn't really enjoy them very much so when I started growing them I was like Phew. yeah but now I grow them myself I do find that they're so much more palatable than if than if I went ahead and bought them from the shop now saying that we do in the summer eat quite a lot of wraps and we do like to eat some salads as well so it's really nice to have like leafy greens to kind of mix it all up baby kale is a really great one to put in there as well baby pat choy things like that to like kind of bulk it out and make it a bit more interesting sometimes we throw in things like dried fruit and um, some nuts and things like that which is once again just to kind of push up that nutrients to make it more filling and to make it more interesting to eat so one of my favorite lettuces that i've found is one called all year round i feel like there's a vegetable for every variety called your all year round and it's a butterhead lettuce if you find that there's like a bitterness to lettuce then this is the variety for you honestly the butterhead's really really nice and you can sow it pretty much all year round depending if you've got cover or not so it's quite a nice one i might actually try to put this in the greenhouse over winter this year um so that when we have sandwiches and stuff that's a good variety to have but it's quite delicious it's quite sweet and it's a really good one to be you know kind of like in the fridge i quite like to do these as heads and just pull them and we probably about one or two heads um a week which is quite good rocket is a very peppery uh, variety my mum absolutely loves this one jasmine detests rocket um but we do like it in sandwiches and things like that i find it quite overpowering so i personally like it in a sandwich or within something but i couldn't eat a whole heap of it if that makes sense but i have seen some recipes that cook with rocket and i found that quite interesting um, this one I think is just a very pretty variety it's a curly um, leaf lettuce which is very pretty you can see the little drawer in there um, I find that one really nice to have in things flavour so side is on the more bitter side so a little bit that's fine that's why we tend to do this one as a cut and come again so we just concentrate on getting the baby leaves because they tend to be a lot sweeter mustard is also something that we like and a small variety once again cut and come again that's like there with the rocket where you get a few peppery leaves it's actually really nice especially in sandwiches gives it a bit of like flavor and texture um we've got things like red iceberg lettuce which is a really nice one it's absolutely heaving with beta carotene which is the colour of red um, and it's really really good for you it's also got vitamin A and vitamin K in it in abundance so it's something that we should all be eating but I really like the red variety there and it's one of those ones that in the sunshine it goes a bit more red so it is a nice variety moving onwards and upwards we have a iceberg lettuce again and <gasps> another iceberg lettuce it's because my partner loves iceberg lettuce so iceberg great lakes and iceberg match these are the two so great lakes and match these are the two varieties that we're going to go for as well as that red one which is super exciting additionally speaking talking about anything along the salads line we've got perennial spinach which i i generally thought it was pretty much the same it's beet leaves so it's very similar to swiss chard swiss chard's a very nice one as well bright lights the one i like uh, for salads i've got some spinach here as well we eat a lot of spinach um 
like in drips and drabs we'll go through periods of time where we'll actually smash through spinach and eat tons of it and then we'll just go off of it for a little while so between spinach and lettuce we kind of alternate but it'd be nice to have like a mix and have these for baby greens as well a super exciting category is our carrots these are some of the carrots we're going to be sowing most of them are down the allotment because obviously you don't um, save carrot seeds and sprinkle them into pots and do it that way I go ahead and just plant them direct so we've got tons of the ones down the allotment like silver sun silver sun red sun uh, there's one called purple haze samurai tons of, of different varieties okay we've got autumn king we've got winter best we've got loads and loads of ones down there oh and Pari paris market they're the ones i can think of off the top of my head this one is another packet of samurai these are red varieties um we've got loads of different color varieties oh. yellowstone's another great variety really long carrots which is good i have um carrots indoors as well that are pelleted because i want to try all different ways of growing carrots this year uh dragon Dracius carita, which is another, I believe, orange variety. Volcano is an F1 hybrid, so we won't be saving seeds. And carrots, which are the Chantenay's red cord carrots, so it's got a red core in the middle. Now, I've also saved seeds for my own carrots, and I've also bought pelleted seeds, etc. I'm going to plant carrots in every way that's feasible this year. So if you can think of a way to grow carrots, and you think, oh, this is the best way to grow carrots, please go ahead and just write down below what you do. I'm going to try every single time this year, because I will be someone who grows carrots okay and I've not been someone <laughs> to grow carrots so I'm gonna find the best way some people have told me do them a little bit deeper some people say do them a little bit you know very very shallow some of them say pelleted seeds are the way so I've gone ahead and done that seed tapes you name it I'm going to my mission is to fill this place with carrots so it'll be really exciting then I can can them um, and I probably will do the wood chip method like I did with my beetroots and be able to store tons of them over the winter because we absolutely love carrots we probably eat about two kilos of carrots a week so it'd be really nice if we could supplement them with our homegrown ones or even be able to completely utterly take over the carrot world and have them I mean carrot cake Mm. A cat, carrots just the best so it'd be really nice if I was a sort of person who was able to grow them that'd be wonderful okay moving onwards and upwards so another thing that I'm really quite passionate about growing kind of goes well with carrots because leeks you add with carrots <laughs> to make wonderful stock and I love making stock we use it in soups we lose, use it in stews we use it in poached dishes and most importantly we use it in our pasta sauces so it's a really important harvest for us we've got one that's called below zero which is a leek from um, simply seeds blue disolis which is another variety I call this for 10b you can't go wrong with 10p you've got d cartonan 2 which is once again another 10p variety this is one with a longer white part in it um and they're blanched by drawing up the um, earth around them so i'm going to remember to do that this year and this variety is called musselberg so it's really exciting i really really want my leeks to do well this year we've got tons and tons of leeks i use the white things for actual cooking like for us if we're going to do something posh we put leeks in it dead posh but the actual green bit i keep for stews and anything that's going to take a long time to boil and normally i decant that and just keep the li liquid that's being produced so that a whole plant is being used herbs that i'm going to be growing it's just a little sprinkle variety stevia i grew that last year this is a little bit like mint apart from it, it's so intensely sweet but i have watched a lot of videos about how to extract stevia into a liquid which i found very exciting this is another important one for us dill love dill uh, we love dill pickles which is one of the reasons why we grow so much dill i'm probably going to grow the dill here at home on the basis that i don't know what's kill eating all my herbs at the allotment but something absolutely loves them um and also i know this doesn't really come under herbs but i've got some of my my celery this is red soup i've also got candy which is a bright pink variety 
the pink and the red varieties are much easier to grow than the green varieties which have problems germinating the key to germinating this bad boy is not to cover them up leave them on top of the um, soil and expose them to sun they will germinate under sun okay I know most of the things you're covering up with soil but these really enjoy being at the right at the top and they've got very very tiny seeds I've got some spring onions here as well blood red spring onions here which are called North Holland blood red so that's that variety which is very good and we've got one that's called deep purple so I really like you know I feel like it might not be true but I do know that beta carotens in darker vegetables and I know that if you eat the rainbow you are much healthier so I try to have as much variety of different colors as possible also for me personally if I'm eating tons and tons of different varieties and different colors and stuff like that I feel like my my meals have a bit more nutrition to them that might be true it might not be another thing we're going to be sowing this march is we've got peas we've got peas and peas and peas we've got peas that are home home saved i believe these are called uh meteor so i save these myself they're beans baby no they're beans um and we've got this one called what's it say that says p Cadbury. We've got one called Cadbury. Um, I have never grown this variety before. It looks like it's a um, sugar snap pea, really good in stir fries, which is exciting. We've got an early one called Kelvin and Wonder, which are well well filled pods and dwarf varieties. I quite like dwarf, dwarf varieties because we have so many pigeons, and the pigeons absolutely love peas. So it's a good way of kind of having them under cover. I'm like in my head don't really understand um, how I can make a climbing structure and have it under cover away from the pigeons because the pigeons are so smart. They sit on it and they lean forward and they eat your peas. I've uh, got sugar snap peas which is a uh, one of my favourites. One of your favourites is it? Yeah. And they're called cassia. Okay. Cassia. Lukia is another sugar snap pea variety and they're really good for stir fries or as an addition to a lovely roast dinner. Or so snack. or a snack, yep. Yeah. You like them as snacks, don't you? They're a really good Jasmine quite likes some lunchbox with a bit of branch dressing. Yes. So it's a really great way to get kids a bit more enthusiastic about eating food. Jasmine. We're gonna go on for some more flowers. Look at those. Even the packets look a lovely, don't they? So um I've got things like Larkspur, which is an absolute lovely larger flower arrangements we're going to grow those one's called wool flowers i've never actually grown these before so if you've got any tips they were 10p um if you've got any tips for me please let me know i'm really excited about having those um one of the reasons why we get it because jasmine likes the fl flowers that smell a lot they also attract loads of beneficial insects we talked about this a lot if you're having problems with germination plant flowers okay it's one of them things isn't it i think david attenborough said it he said if you give things the right environment they will come if you give pollinators the correct environment they will come so i hopefully will have a absolutely amazing variety and um ability to attract them and then they'll be able to come and spend time in my garden pollinate on my plants this one is called petunia this always reminds me of auntie petunia in harry potter um it's a climbing variety the kansas i've tried this a few times i don't think it's ever germinated so i'll try it again this year i've got a new one this was a free um with my seeds that i bought from mr Feathergills, and this was called blue denim so that's a really exciting one for me personally haven't tried it before apparently it's large vivid blue flowers that are very very long lasting so it's going to be really exciting and all those different colors together i think the more colorful it is the prettier it is so we've got pinks reds orange you name it i've also got these chinese lanterns which are notorious for being really widespread in but i can't get them to germinate and I've spoken to a couple of people and they can't get them to germinate so if you've got any tips for these bad boys let me know apparently they are edible and I'm quite excited about that as well and I've also got my trusted beetroot it's just a mixed variety and tomatoes but I'm going to do a whole entire video on their own about the varieties we're going to be sowing so thank you so much 
for hanging out with us and please go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done already because you'll be missing out on content like this yeah. what are you going to be sewing this month please let us know down below and if you've got any tips and trips i'm very much grateful for them thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye purple sprout and broccoli spell purple sprout bro is that a word harvestable has the is being harvest not sure Anyway, so North Holland blood, blood, blood North Hol Holland, North I just feel a little bit better in myself. I feel like, you know, I've, I feel more nutritious, neutralised. I have more nutrition.